Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wines video. With the Wine Club, we strive to bring you exciting wines that have a great backstory and wines that taste really good with the wine selections that we make for you. But what you may not realize is that we also make sure to deliver you with wines that taste of where they come from. Very few food products or beverages vary as much depending on their origin as wine does. So we might as well make the most of this diversity and variety of flavors and we might as well taste authentic wines. You may have heard people like myself talk a lot about typicity for wines and today I want to expand a bit on this concept, what it means and why it actually matters. This is what you need to know about typicity in wine. Let's go. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated cost. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. Rather than detailing at length what makes a wine typical, I thought first I'd give you the inverted image of this so you understand simply what we call typicity in wine. I'm going to be exaggerating here a little bit. Let's say you were a wine grower in the warm heart of the Napa Valley, say around Rutherford if you know this area, and rather than having planted your usual Cabernet Sauvignon or Merlot like everyone else, you have Pinot Noir in your vineyards, and on top of that, because you like your wine to be light-bodied and acidic, you you pick your grapes quite early so the wine has less alcohol, less tannins, more acidity and a light red color. On top of that you don't want oaky flavors in your wine so you ferment and age your Pinot exclusively in stainless steel tanks. You end up with a light and fruity style of Pinot Noir with notes of sour cherry and little red berries for example. It may be a very good quaffable wine but it's not going to be typical or what someone buying a Napa wine would normally expect from a Napa Valley wine, right? Or say, another example, you grow vines in Chateau Neuf du Pape in Rhone in the sunny south of France and you have a vineyard with wrestling, making this type of white wine that is normally expected to come from Germany or Alsace. This wine won't have original typicity. Or say, you are a German producer of wrestling wine from the muzzle, but you don't want that crisp, fruity style. You want strong oaky flavors and you age your white wine in 100% highly toasted oak barrels, resulting in a waxy, yellow, smoky wine full of vanilla flavors, while all your neighbors make a bright and lemony and oak style of crisp wrestling wine. Or you are a burgundy producer, last example, making Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, but you dry up your grapes in your attic to concentrate them before fermenting them. Using the same technique that they use in Italy to make the famous Amarone della Valpolicella, the Vincento or the Passito style that is so famous in Italy. You'd have a very rich, oily and sweet style of burgundy, Pinot or Chardonnay. All of these styles that I've described may well be excellent. I'd actually be super curious to try them. Thinking about them, they actually sound very interesting, but they wouldn't be typical wines. I guess I would be curious to try them because, well, they would be curiosities. Did this start painting in your mind a picture of what is typicity in wine? 
Let's break things down briefly, the components that make a wine typical of where it comes from. First is of course the grape variety used to make the wine. Some regions are known or renowned for using certain grapes and not others. In Europe, those are generally the same grapes that have been grown in an area for centuries and centuries, like Pinot Noir in Burgundy, Syrah and Grenache in the Rhone, Sangiovese in Tuscany, Riesling in Germany, etc. etc. In the New World, those are more recent customs and tradition, yet they can be significantly impacting on the wine growers' production, like of course in Cabernet, Napa Valley, Shiraz in Australia, Malbec in Argentina, or Sauvignon Blanc in New Zealand. Second component of typicity is winemaking. As we've seen with the examples I gave you before, a winemaker can dramatically change the style of wine he makes if he or she uses certain techniques, like picking the grapes earlier or very late that can change dramatically the style of wine, the oak treatment, the oxygen treatment, destemming or not, and so on and so on. I'm not gonna get too technical into winemaking. Finally, tradition or local custom. So how the wine has always been made in a particular area, like using a long aging in American oak barrels, specifically in Rioja, Spain, you had a range of Rioja wines in your Spanish wine selection, if you remember, we talked about this, or using significant oak in Napa wine, as we know, while there's relatively little oak used in Burgundy as a contrast, or using large oak vats called Borti in Italy for making Chianti or Barolo, for example, the Italians are the masters are doing this, they love doing that. This is just to give you a few examples of how particular local traditions impact whether a wine is going to be considered typical of the area or not. Now, all of the above is also related to the local climate as well. Of course, winemakers and wine growers plant certain grapes and adopt certain winemaking practices because the local climate allows to make certain style of wine that are generally considered better than if you made them differently in this particular area. It's tied up, it's all tied up together, it's a complete system that one needs to understand to craft good wine. It's complex, it's complicated, but it all makes sense once you understand it. There was a time when typicity was lost in the world of wine, and that's around the 1990s and the 2000s. And it's often attributed to the star wine critic that you may have heard about, Robert Parker, and what was sometimes called the Parkerization of wines. Essentially, there was a recipe for making big, rich, oaky wines that pleased wine critics and magazines, especially those in the US, and every winery around the world was applying the same recipe to make similar styles of wines, only with small differences between them regardless of where they were coming from. I guess it also pleased the American palate for bigger, sweeter wines, even though this American palate term is of course a gross generalization and it doesn't mean much, but there was a level of truth to it, I suppose. Now and for the last past 10 years or so, perhaps because Robert Parker has retired, but also because things change and move on, the world of wine goes toward more typicity and distinctive character for different wines from different regions. Using more local grapes or reintroducing ancient grapes using less oak, which allows the wine itself to be expressed, not the oak that everyone has access to, but it's the same oak for everyone, right? And that also results in more affordable wines because oak is very expensive, so that's always a little plus. So now every region goes proudly towards affirming more and more the local signature style and it's great to see and exciting to taste for sure. There's been a big shift in consumers' expectation for more authentic wines and it's fantastic to see. As a conclusion, what I wanted to highlight here is that what typicity does is that it allows us as consumers to be able to rely on what we know about a region and a style of wine that it makes in that particular spot when we buy a bottle of wine. So we can pick a bigger style if we want one, a lighter style if we want one, a fruity style versus a spicy one, buy what we want and like to pair with it as well so we can find the right wine for the right food, for example. On top of that, it allows us as wine consumers but also wine experts who review wine, judge or score wines like I do sometimes to compare different wineries with one another and rank the quality of their wines on a scale. Because the wines are similar, relatively similar in style and flavor, so you can actually compare them and not compare apples with oranges. So it helps the whole industry as a whole through more 
transparency, because we know a bit more what to expect. If every one producer was making a different eccentric choice for their, from their neighbors, the whole thing would just be utterly confusing and unreadable, and you never know what you'd be buying. But having typicity in wine, the world of wine remains very complex and varied, but it remains readable, somewhat readable at least, and it allows the curious wine connoisseur to explore confidently. Understand and explore this outstanding diversity because it's sizable, you can actually grasp it mentally because it's not too, too overly complex. And yes, the world of wine is more interesting and fascinating than ever because it is covered with this myriad of small patches of typicity from each region of little village. And if I wanted to bring it back to the Bonner Private Wine Club, well, I'd say that it's those little patches of typicity that we like to bring and explain to you with the wines that we select for you, that we send you. I hope this all makes sense and I'll leave it here for today. See you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir. Cheers.